Hi everybody, welcome back to your Daily Dose at Home. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the Visitor Engagement Team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today you have met some of the incredible researchers and population ecologists who are using conservation science to save species around the world. Today we're going to explore some of the other ways that the zoo teams are using different kinds of science to protect both wildlife and wild places right here on zoo grounds. To start with, when we think about the animals at the Calgary Zoo, we think of our incredible animal care team. They make sure all of our habitats are clean, the animals are fed, and they have awesome enrichment. But did you know they are also experts in the zoo sciences of animal behavior, husbandry, breeding, and training? We have 119 different species in our care here at the Calgary Zoo and each one is unique and has unique needs. So we have to make sure that we're meeting all of those different animals' needs here in our care to ensure that every species has optimal welfare. What kind of things do we have to consider? Well, to start off, let's think about social dynamics. Some species in our care are herd animals, like mountain goats, giraffes, zebras. So we need to make sure that they are housed with other members of their species. Others are solitary, like pandas or tigers, so we'll often see them by themselves. So we need to understand what a biologically appropriate social dynamic is. We also need to be able to understand animal behavior, to know what is a normal animal's behavior versus something that might indicate a health concern. And that is going to be different and unique for every one of the species in our care. The other thing that's unique is their diet, and this is where our zoo science team of nutritionists come in. Food chemistry is an incredibly complex science. Every animal has unique needs for vitamins, for minerals, for how much food they need to obtain an optimal weight, uh, and for everything they need for good digestive health. This is going to vary not just between species, like lions and tigers having a different diet, but also within a species. So animals like our male lions, Aslan and Baruti, they eat more than a female lion's Mali and Sabi do, simply because they are male and they are larger and have a larger body to fuel. We also have to understand the science of animal breeding, which is much more complicated than just having animals in the same habitat together and hoping for the best. We need to know how frequently can a female get pregnant? Is it once a year, seasonally, every month? If a female mammal is pregnant, how long is she pregnant for? How big will her baby be when it's born? What about, do they mate once a season with the same mate or change mates? What is normal for that species? For an egg laying animal, how long do they incubate their eggs for? What happens when that chick is hatched? How long will it take to raise them? These are all the complexities that go into understanding the science of breeding to make sure that we optimize our chances of success. The other component of our breeding programs is the species survival plan, which are agreements between zoos and aquariums to breed animals that are genetically diverse. That means we have to understand animal genetics and relatedness. So we work with scientists like population geneticists and the SSP coordinators to move animals around and create breeding recommendations that will create genetic diversity within the species in our care. Now, we could not talk about science here at the Calgary Zoo without talking about our animal health center team. This incredible group of veterinarians and animal health technicians manages the well-being of all 119 species. And that means they need to know the anatomy and physiology of everybody. Let's just think about that for a second. If you're comparing the diagnostic imaging or x-rays of an animal like a grizzly bear to a flamingo, they are completely different body systems. And being able to understand and diagnose health conditions means getting that. It's even different between animals like a grizzly bear and a black bear. What looks normal and healthy in one animal might be a health concern in another. So our veterinary team needs to have all of that knowledge. They also have to understand animal physiology. How does an animal's metabolism work? How do they process different medications? If you're diagnosing and treating and then giving a medication prescription, it's going to be very, very different depending on what species that's in. Is it a fish versus an ostrich? Totally different things. So I'm always blown away by our zoo health center team having to know all of these different sciences about 119 different kinds of animal. Other kind of zoo science that we haven't even talked about is our habitat science. The amazing team of building operators and horticulturalists, electricians, welders, carpenters come together to create and build incredible animal habitats. But every one of those species has different needs for climate, for temperature, for pH, for our aquatic species, the water chemistry. 
All of those come together to create dynamic habitats that are perfectly designed to suit each unique individual. So here at the Calgary Zoo, there is amazing science happening every day that helps protect wildlife and wild places. And a lot of those different sciences turn into really cool different zoo careers. Today on your Daily Dose at Home activity, we've put together a little zoo fortune teller to help figure out what zoo science you might be most suited for. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Daily Dose at Home, and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.